Launching a new feature in your app can be complex and risky. What if something goes wrong? How will you know that your customers are having a bad experience? And how quickly can you fix it? And how do you know that what you're launching is really what your customers want anyway? My name is Steve Wilbur, and I'm an engineer working on Firebase Remote Config and A-B testing. And I'm Karen Zhang, also an engineer on the team. Today, we're going to share some tips with you on how to use these Firebase growth products in your app development process. We'll talk about how to use Firebase A-B testing to build an experience that your customers will love, and how to use remote config to maintain control of the experience that you deliver. Hopefully, this will help you avoid the dreaded one-star reviews of a bad release and let you sleep more soundly at night. I'd like to introduce you to a fictional app that Karen and I are working on called Trekker. It's an app that nature lovers like us use to find the best hikes nearby. Whether you're visiting Yosemite and want to find the best route to the top of Half Dome, or just looking for something closer to home, Trekker can be your guide. We're going to talk about how to use remote config to safely launch a new feature in your app. And then we'll use A-B testing to tune that experience to better meet our customers' needs. Trekker is already loved by customers for its ability to curate the best hikes in your area and display maps that you can follow along on your hike. But there isn't yet a way to share that experience with your friends. We think that this will be a great way to unlock some additional growth. We'll let customers review their hikes and then share that review with their friends. We think our customers will love showing off their trips into nature and the reviews they share will help drive more downloads of Trekker. Let's take a look at testing and launching that feature using Remote Config. First, let me tell you a little bit about what Remote Config is and how it works. You can think of Remote Config as a key value store that lives in the cloud. Those key value pairs are consumed by your app to configure the experience that you want to deliver. We provide SDKs that make it super easy to fetch your configuration handling things like caching and network issues for you. Remote Config also has powerful targeting features that allow you to configure the experience for different customer segments, whether those are by country, language, analytics audience, and more. The first thing we'll do as we code up this new review feature is to set up a feature flag for it. In case you're new to the practice of feature flagging, a feature flag is like an on-off switch that we have in our code that we can control from the Remote Config dashboard. Having this feature flag gives us the ability to maintain control of the experience our customers are receiving. Perhaps you've had this experience before. You code up a new feature for your app, get the release approved by the App Store, but then when your customers update, they start hitting a major bug. It can take days to code up a fix, go through the review process again, and wait for them to update to the new version. But when we put the feature behind a flag, we can turn that feature off for everyone, or perhaps just the affected users. Let's open up the Remote Config Console and start configuring the feature flag for our new review feature. You can see that there are some existing parameters that we've already set up for this project. We grouped some of those together to help organize configuration parameters that are used together, such as this one that the team used to launch the app's new summer theme. To create the new parameter that will be our feature flag, I'll click Add Parameter. Let's call it Review Feature Enabled. We'll set the default value to false, since we want the feature to be hidden from our customers while we're still testing it. I'll click Add Parameter to save my changes locally. And once I'm ready to make that flag available to my app, I'll click Publish Changes. Now that I've published my feature flag, I can hook it up in my app. I went ahead and got that set up ahead of time. So let's take a look at what the app looks like with the flag off. Sure enough, with the flag off, I do not see any reviews showing up. But now I'd like to start doing some testing on this new feature. How can I make it available for folks on our team to take a look? We can make use of a user property. User properties are attributes that we can set in our app, like a user ID. We can then tell Remote Config to enable behavior for users that have particular values set. Let's set that up now for our feature flag. I'll go to the User Properties tab in the Firebase console, and I'll create a new user property called Username. Now I'll go back to Remote Config, and I'm going to edit the feature flag we set up. 
I'll define a new condition and I'll call it internal testers. And I'll say it applies if the username contains Steve Wilbur. For those testers, we'll want to provide a value of true. And let's save those changes and then publish. Now that I've enabled the flag for my test account, let's switch back over to the app and verify that it's on. Yep, okay. Now I've got my review feature ready for testing. You can probably imagine some other ways you might use user properties for your internal testing, whether that's putting a debug panel into your app or enabling features for any users that have a company email address. So now let's fast forward a little bit in time. We have finished our testing and our review feature is ready to get shipped out. Since we're using remote config, we have the ability to do a percentage-based rollout. That is, we can start by exposing the feature to a small portion of our user base. That way we can keep a close eye on our metrics, support channels, and app store reviews to make sure that our launch is going smoothly. Let's open our parameter and define a new condition to start the rollout. We'll call it review feature rollout. We'll set it to apply for our Trekker app. Then we'll add a condition for user is in a random percentile. And we'll start with 5%. And let's set the value to true for that rollout. Let's save that and publish our changes. And just like that, we've launched our feature to 5% of our customers. Hey, Steve. We're getting some support emails from customers saying that they're seeing errors when they try to post reviews. I think we might have a problem with our new feature. Do you think we should roll it back? That sounds like a good idea to me. Good thing we've got this feature behind a feature flag and can use remote config to turn it off while we investigate a fix. Let's go back and edit the flag and we'll set the rollout condition value to false. We'll publish that change. And just like that, we've gotten our customers back into a good state. No long nights trying to fix the bug or stressing out about getting bad app store reviews. We were able to use remote config to maintain control of the code we were releasing and keep our customers happy. Next, we code up a fix and get that new version shipped out to customers. Now that it's out in the wild, it's time to give our rollout another go. We don't just want to go back and turn that feature flag on for everyone though, right? Some of our customers still have that buggy version of our app. So we'll make use of another one of remote configs targeting conditions to limit the versions of the app that we'll enable our flag for. We'll switch over to the conditions tab and edit our rollout condition. We'll add another criteria, which will be a version condition. The version that we shipped the bug fix in is 1.2. So we will only turn the flag on for this or future versions of the app. I'll save that condition, and then we go back to the parameter and change the rollout value back to true. And once I publish my changes, we've restarted our rollout. As we observe usage of the feature and we feel confident in rolling out to a larger audience, we can go to the conditions tab and up the percentage. Eventually, we get to 100% and our launch is complete. We'll just want to remember to keep this flag in place to prevent any customers still on that bad version from getting that buggy version of our feature. Eventually, as your customers upgrade, you'll be able to come back and remove this flag altogether to keep your configuration nice and tidy. All right, we've completed the rollout of our new feature. We've been able to track that rollout and see that customers are successfully writing reviews for their hikes. High fives all around. But we see from our metrics that users aren't sharing those reviews as much as we hoped. Well, hmm, maybe it's time to do a little experimenting to see if we can get users to share more often. What do you think we should do next, Karen? Hmm, I do have some ideas on how to increase review sharing, but ideally I'd like to test out different designs on our users to see which one is the most effective. I think we should run an A-B test. And Firebase A-B testing looks like a great tool to help us do this. Before we dive into setting up an experiment, let's talk a bit more about how the A-B testing product works. Firebase A-B testing allows you to easily test variations of your app on your users to help identify which variation is the most effective at driving the results you care about. Because it is built on top of Firebase Remote Config, very little extra setup is required. You can define your experiment variants simply by setting different values for your Remote Config parameters. A-B testing's integration with Google Analytics 
also means that common app metrics such as retention or revenue can be measured straight out of the box. This data is analyzed by the A-B testing pipeline to recommend the best performing variant to roll out to your users. Sounds pretty great, right? Let's try it out. First, we need to come up with some potential improvements to our app. Looking at the review screen, I think that the share button is a bit too hidden in the corner, and maybe that's why users aren't interacting with it. Let's test moving the button to some more prominent locations. So we now have two test variants. In variant A, we've moved the button to the center of the screen, and for variant B, we'll test positioning the button at the bottom of the screen. Hopefully the new placements will draw more attention from our users. We'll code up both these variants in the Trekker app, but because we don't know how users will respond to these changes just yet, we'll put both variants behind a feature flag and disable them for now. All these changes have been released in version 1.3 of the app, and we're now ready to set up our experiment. We're back on the remote config page in the Firebase console, and here we see our parameter defining the location of the share button. This is the behavior we want to A-B test, so let's click on the A-B test button to launch the experiment creation flow. Great, it looks like the experiment name is already auto-populated, and let's add a quick description to remind ourselves of the goal of this test. Next, we will select Tricker as a target app. And since we only want to run the experiment for users with the latest app changes, I'll add a version targeting condition for versions greater than or equal to 1.3. Within this target audience, we want a user base that is large enough to get meaningful results but also not so large to significantly affect app usage if something goes wrong. 5% sounds like a good start. This group will be evenly distributed across our experiment variants. Next, we need to select a metric as our experiment goal. This should be the primary result you want to drive for your app. We want to see more hike reviews being shared. And from the dropdown, it looks like this custom review shared event is already defined and tracked in the app. Perfect, I will select that and leave the additional metrics in place. On to experiment variants. Here, we're going to define the different app experiences we want to show our users. For the control group, we will be keeping the existing behavior, so no change is needed. For variant A, we will enable the feature flag to show the share button in the center of the screen. And for variant B, we will position the button at the bottom. Let's update the variant names to reflect the app experience we're testing. And that's all the setup we need. I'll click on Review to see a summary of our experiment. We're now in the Draft view, and expanding on the Detail section shows us all our selections from the previous steps. Now's the perfect time to check for typos or make sure your target audience is defined correctly. And it's OK if you notice something or change your mind later. You can always come back and edit the experiment, even after it started running. Everything here looks good to me, so I'll click on Start Experiment. And that's it. 5% of Trekker users will be randomly assigned into one of the three groups, and we'll see the corresponding app experience the next time their app fetches from Remote Config. So that was the setup part. And usually, you'd have to wait some time for your experiment to run and collect data. But let's speed things up a bit for this video. We'll assume that a few weeks have gone by since we started the experiment. And let's go back to the Firebase console to take a look at our results. We see our experiment in the A-B testing page. Let's click in for some more details. It looks like the bottom share button has resulted in the most reviews shared and is a recommended variant to roll out. Scrolling down further, we can see a comparison of how each variant performed over time against the baseline and how many users shared their reviews. Looking at this, we can be fairly confident in our results. I think we're ready to roll this out to our users. Let's click on Roll Out Variant to update the share button location. The same target audience created in the experiment will be used for the rollout. So this rollout will only affect Trekker users with app version greater than or equal to 1.3. We'll rename the targeting condition and review our changes in remote config. Here, we can see that the share button position parameter now has the new condition and new value. 
and clicking on Publish will deliver this improved app experience to our users. All right, we've covered a lot of ground together. I think that'll do it for today. We used Remote Config to feature flag our new review feature. We used Remote Config's targeting capabilities to test that feature with a limited audience until we were confident that it was ready for all of our customers. We did a slow rollout, which ended up minimizing the impact of a bug that we missed. Hey, it happens to the best of us. We rolled that feature back to give ourselves time to fix it and to get a new version shipped out. Once we completed our launch, we discovered that customers weren't sharing as much as we were hoping. But we were able to run an A-B test to determine a new layout that got us the growth we were looking for. But really, we're just scratching the surface of what you can do with remote config and A-B testing. We didn't even get into things like targeting Google Analytics audiences, making use of the remote config API, or using BigQuery to do deep analysis of A-B test results. So if you want to learn more, you can dig into some of the links in the description below. We hope you've learned a thing or two that you can use to build something amazing for your customers. Thanks for joining us. Bye.